Well, it's one of the longest running clubs in American rock and roll. Now, First Avenue is getting the rock star treatment. A new book titled First Avenue, Minnesota's Main Room, just went on sale this past month. It chronicles the club's story past from the 70s through today. Joining us this morning is the author of the book, Chris, pronounce your last name? Riemann Schneider. Riemann Schneider, yeah. thank you. To tell us a, a little more about it. Flows little, right off the tongue. With a last name like Augusta Neck, I totally agree. <laughs> sure, sure. uh, so First Avenue is obviously, mm -hmm. it looms large not only in our minds, but the, the minds of, across the U.S. Yeah, um, and, and that really was kind of the impetus for the book, was was this this local landmark. We should take more pride in it, I think, in the city, but also you know, people around the country love this place. They want to read more about it and learn the history of it. But it wasn't all boom times, right? There no. were some bus times. No. And that surprised me. I, I actually, a majority of, of their uh, existence has been, they've been hanging by a thread. Up, up until 2004, that place basically never made money, except for a few years around Purple Rain, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Then we look at, we're memory. almost coming up on 50 years now, yeah. and we do think about Purple Rain and Prince and all of his performances there. Yeah. Purple Rain really put First Ave on the map. It did, it did. It, but... On the other hand, First Avenue really helped put Prince on the map sure. and really play, and, and it's detailed in the book, really played an integral role. He, he never really found his audience here in town. He played cut like a, only about a year before he played his first First Avenue show. It was called Sam's at that point. He played the Orpheum, a half full Orpheum. He never mm -hmm. really found his audience and then things just clicked when he started playing First Avenue so, there. And so beyond the fact that Prince sort of became Prince at First Avenue, why did he like this club so much? He liked, well, first of all, he, compared to the Orpheum, you needed to dance if you're mm -hmm. at a Prince show, and, and First Avenue has the big open dance floor for, for dancing. He liked the urban. There was a real, there's a real interesting history of, of uh, black musicians were not allowed to play in downtown Minneapolis for a long time. And, and so to him playing there in this eclectic, urban, really diverse crowd, which, which was what First Avenue's forte was in, in the 80s, that really attracted him. And it's just a great live music room. And obviously he's a great live performer, mm -hmm. so like, things clicked on that front too. This has been a place that you've been going to for a long time as well. You've seen a number of shows there and have a special connection to it. I mean, is that part of why you decided to write this book? Yeah, I've, I, you know, I, obviously I go to tons and tons of shows. This is the place I've been going to since I'm 14 years old. You know, there's there's not a lot of places in rock and roll that last even five years. So for it to, to be coming up on its 50th anniversary is incredible. Those of us who go there a lot, it, it's it's just it's, it, we feel passionate about the place, and and so many people in this town have spent <coughs> so many memorable and and forgotten <laughs> yes. nights right. at that club. So, in your opinion, and based on your research, do you think that the best days of the club are are behind it or ahead of it? No, the last chapter of my book is called the real heyday. Hmm. Since 2004, they they went they they closed for a few weeks. There was this bankruptcy battle in 2004. We really did think we were going to lose it. Lo and behold, uh, come 2005, they turned a profit. They've turned a profit every year since then. They really are. They've expanded. They're now booking the Palace Theater in St. Paul. Right. They, they, they own the Turf Club in St. Paul. They're sort of a little mini empire. And, and meanwhile, that the, the old room itself is doing as great as it's ever been. From bus station to legendary music room. Yeah, the bus station history was really, <laughs> we got some fascinating old photos in there. It's an amazing book. Thanks. It is, and um, I know there's much more that people can find in there when they take a look. All right, thanks so much for being thanks, in here with us, Thanks, Chris. My pleasure, thanks.